here he comes to save the day. Oh my god, I sound just like Mighty Mouse. Yeah, how about man? Do you remember? Do you remember waking up watching Mighty Mouse? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that to me was a true superhero right there. I mean, but wh- I'm not seeing any Mighty Mouse movies out there, though. I know, and I do find myself increasingly more and more around. I I was talking to someone, um, a girl recently, about Will and Grace, and she's like, "Who are Will and Grace?" Oh no! And I was like, "Hmm." She's like 24. I'm like, "Okay." Wow! Wow! That and, fast, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Wow. So, man, what's been going on in your life, mister? I see a lot of you on stage. Are you are you headed back to that live stage? I am. I mean, this is crazy, but for the first time in 30 years, um, I was lured and had an opportunity to try to, you know, test, flex that muscle once again. And uh, I grew up in the theater doing a lot of musicals professionally as a child and into my teenage years and uh, my freshman year of college was the last time I did it. Now, 30 years later, I'm uh, in a professional production of The Sound of Music at Forte Theater Company, which is in Franklin, Wisconsin. Wow. And uh, the, the cast is phenomenal. This director is amazing. I can't believe I'm working with him. And I'm learning so much. I mean, you know, I, I thought I knew a lot having done so many shows throughout my um, y- youth and young adulthood. And then... Um, you know, and then after judging performances as a theater critic, a film critic, a TV critic for, for the better for you know 17 years now, stepping onto the other side in a professional capacity, it's just been watching the process, and I've, I've been gaining so much respect. And you know, it's also funny because I sit and and review theater, and now right. it's a chance for people to come in and be like, oh, <laughs> let's see how good you're at it. You think it's so easy, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, so that's a little bit nerve wracking and I, I, I'm very nervous and I'm very scared, but it's, I'm having the time of my life. I don't know that I'll ever do it again, um, but it's something that I just, you know, it was an opportunity that it was too exciting and too cool to kind of pass up in the moment. Um, six performances only, uh, October 7th through the 16th uh, at, a, at a state of the art performing arts facility that had just had a multi-million dollar renovation and is beautiful. And so... Um, you know, I have friends and family flying in from all over the country. Oh, and my like God. Doing, doing a lot of promotional stuff on, on television here for it. And I'm very, very excited, very, very proud of impressed by this team. And, and you know, I'm sure I'll be the weak link. But, um, <laughs> but it's still, still kind of cool to be a part of it all, you know? Wow. You, you've been heavy on my mind all week because I talked with, a, with an author this week. His name is Ryan Jacobson. And, and he does, oh. he, he's done all of these books called Choose Your Own Path. And his newest book is Can You Survive the Wizard of Oz? And, no way. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. And I thought of you so quickly. And, and it puts you in a place where could you survive the Wizard of Oz? And I thought, Ryan can. Trust me, Ryan can. I need. I can believe me, but also like I feel like I need. I need to review a copy of that book or help promote it. <laughs> really, it's it's just it's amazing how the Wizard of Oz has been coming up in a lot of my conversations lately, and and because people use it as as basically as as a, a reference is what they're doing. They'll they'll talk about things that happen in the story, and then and then build upon it on on how we can you know you know exercise something that they did inside that story. And I go, is is Ryan J a part of this? What's what's going on here? That's fun. Funny. That is so funny. <laughs> so I love that. Let's talk about movies and 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 the see how they run. I'm not familiar with this because it seems like we're in a dry period in movie theaters right now with with like Regal and stuff like that going into bankruptcy. I mean, we need Hollywood to to save these movie companies. This is an exciting week, actually. Everything's really good this week. I feel like this week um, features some of the most visually striking films of the year and see how they run is excellent it's basically like what wes anderson has tried to do his entire career but never could really? which is a very stylized cool looking um candy colored noir film that actually has a uh, bite and point and substance and and story and and comedy and the rest of it so um this one is a uh, whodunit and it is takes place during the golden age of hollywood it's an set in the west end where a production of agatha christie's the mousetrap is on play is is on stage oh, wow. in a very successful run and and being adapted to the screen and by some hollywood filmmakers that are out there and of course someone is murdered 
<laughs> and so there's this colorful cast, this ensemble cast of suspects, and the inspectors are Sam Rockwell doing his best uh, drunk Johnny Depp uh, dialect impression. It's hilarious. And then um, Saoirse Ronan is like a rookie in, uh, constable, and she's so funny. I laughed so much. I watched this on a screener at home, but I was like just – I could even, while I was watching it at home and I was laughing, I was just imagining being in the theater and hearing everyone laughing. Wow. Wow. It's that funny. It's really great. It's a directorial debut for this guy, and it's phenomenal cinematography, some shots I'd never seen before. It's such creative design, and I really, really enjoyed it. And it doesn't have the best climax, which is a little disappointing because, you know, those you know, the reveals are usually really big and, and twisty and cool. Um, but it doesn't detract from the film at all, and I loved it. So I'd say see it. Wow, and this is going to be in theaters, correct? It is. And you know what? Anyone that's listening right now that wants to win a pair of free tickets to see this of their choice for their basically Fandango code, so you can pick the time and the place where, where and when you want to see see how they run, head over to my website right now, ryanjreviews.com, and you can sign up to win two free tickets to see that movie. Look at you. Look at you. Taking care there of the people. Go. My God. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> hey, I said it's great. Now, now if, you know, you go check it out for free. You've got no excuse not to see it now. Just go to my website. Yeah, and make sure that if you get the tickets, use the tickets. I, I, I'm tired of people like that that'll 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 come and get those. those oh those, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they, and they don't they don't show up, and it's like I needed you in those seats. There's a reason why That's you earned those tickets. Yeah, that's true. Wow. So what is Pearl? Pearl, I can't believe you haven't seen the trailer for this one. Oh my God, it's so like bloody and crazy and what? creepy and interesting. Um, Pearl is a rated R horror film that is a prequel to the film X, which came out in March of this year. Now, I didn't see that one, but um, this one was great. Now I want to see X, and apparently they're planning to write or to make a third one called Maxine, Triple X Maxine, and it's uh going to be a trilogy then but Whoa. which is a sequel to x but it's produced co-written by <clears throat> and starring mia goth and this was shot back in new zealand back to back with x and she's so amazing she's got a monologue in this film first of all that like i she should get an oscar nomination really? i'm not even joking she plays a seriously disturbed young woman who lives alone on a farm with her mom and her quadriplegic you know immobilized father mute father and her mom is like abusive and crazy and scary to the point of like you don't know if you should laugh or scream and she's psychotic like the things that she does she starts with like you know hurting small animals and then kind of builds her way up from there you know what i mean wow yeah and the, the interesting thing about it is it's an elevated horror film which means like basically an art house horror film but it's a really fun one it's not an inaccessible one and it's 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 it, the director's goal he set out just to, to do like what would it be like if disney made a horror movie <laughs> so there's a real yeah there's a real um dichotomy between like what's happening versus like the tone and the score of like the color and like the score and like the graphics and like everything is it looks like a disney movie or like a 1950s like wow. you know leave it to beaver type sitcom and then so totally it suddenly it's like oh my god it's a horror film yeah <laughs> so it's very unique that way very cool the melodrama is amazing and mia is just beyond incredible and, and, and i really liked it and this is also in theaters Correct. I'm well, recommending and, and, it. And the reason why I bring that up, I, I just want to keep reminding people that theaters do exist because it's killing me that major theaters are going out of business. And 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 it's it's like it's like we got to get people to go back and to go to watch movies like Pearl and and see how they run and stuff like that. Don't don't be waiting for the next Tom well, Cruise movie. Well, I think movie. part of the problem is, and I didn't realize this would be a problem because I kind of liked that this was happening. But you know, the movies that are released in theaters, it's relatively soon after that they're available to stream digitally. Yeah, I, whether you have to yeah. whether you have to buy them for 19.99 or rent them for you know six nine. Nine ninety nine or whatever it is. Yep. Some people are willing to wait to do that at home. You know, three months after it was just in theaters, you used to have to wait up to a year for it to come out to VHS or something or yep. DVD or you know. So I think that cycle, that window closing, which I enjoy, but I'm still seeing things in the theaters. Um, I think other people are getting wise to, and they're kind of like, why should I go spend, you know. $25 in tickets and then another $50 on food when I can just wait three months and then just watch it, rent it for nine ninety nine at home. Wow, is that, it sounds like my sister because she saw Elvis at home and I go, how much did you pay for to see Elvis? Twenty four ninety nine. I said, it was just you in the living room? Yeah. And she goes, I didn't like the movie. I said, you made a mistake. You should have been what? in the theater. Yeah, I told her, I said, she should have experienced it in the theater. It would have been a better movie if she because it's not a flat screen movie. You've got to go and experience it. 
I can't imagine it not being good still on TV. I mean, unless she's got a tiny TV. I mean, I got a 75 inch, you know, 4K. But still, it's like, um, and I have friends who have bigger TVs now, and I'm so like, can I hang out at your house now? Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it, I just think like, wow, like I can't believe anybody not liking that movie. Well, that's that's, that's a rarity. I, 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 I was shocked when she said that because I really honestly thought that she was going to fall in love with this. That she was this right. was an Oscar contender. You know, Tom Hanks. Yes, he does play kind of a jerk in the movie, but you know what? That's yeah. Tom Hanks. He can play anybody and still win trophies right, right, right. really quickly because i have to run but do revenge is a new film streaming streaming on netflix Ooh. and it's like a cross between mean girls clueless cruel intentions and other classics amazing co-writers these women previously wrote thor love and thunder space jam new legacy they work together on sweet Vict- uh, vicious the tv show sarah michelle geller has a really fun um, cameo as the school principal and then you've got it stars maya hawk of course the daughter of ethan hawk and uma thurman <gasps> and riverdale's camilla mendez and they're basically these two girls at this very, very like high end uh, high school, and they decide to get revenge for each other's drama. So they're like, I'll take care of the people who wronged you. You take care of the people who wronged me. It's a little long, but again, still fun, worth seeing, and that's streaming on Netflix now. Wow. RyanJReviews.com. Go get your makeup on. You've got to be on, on set, and when they call yeah. your name, you've got to be there, guy. They don't need to be talking to Arrow. Oh, no, I just have to run. I'm sorry. I'm running behind. (laughs) Well, you be brilliant today, man, and it's great to talk to you. You too, Arrow. I've missed you. Thanks so much.